Howdy everyone, welcome to another episode of Devlogs. The semester is over, and I have started a summer job at my university. I am in many cool projects, some of which involve WISE, Premiere, Unity, and more. Just thought I'd share that because it's definitely keeping me busy most of my time on the weekdays. However, in the evenings, I work little by little on my senior project on creating assets. As you can see right now, one of those assets happened to be a space parallax scene I've been working on. Now, I've been wanting to get into A-Sprite for some time, which I have, but only for art pieces here and there. To take it a step further, the art being made here will be used in Unity for our parallax. My method of doing this is inspired off the video you see here by Adam C. Eunice. I'll be sure to link this video, but what I want to note is how I will be reinterpreting a bit of what he did for reasons geared towards my project. So in his video, all of his art is set to tile mode. Mine is as well, but essentially tile mode is useful for showing how, as a player is traveling in a 2D space, the background will repeat itself while moving, delivering a sense of progression. Now, if different layers are scrolling past you at different speeds, this can really convince the eye that you're making good progress. I want to mix up what he did though, and what I mean by that is, I do not want my background to loop at all, but I still want it to slightly move and tell somewhat of a scenic story for the player. How I decided to do this was to create a background with a wider width. This layer would not repeat itself and would scroll slowly. Any other layer was set in the dimensions Adam used and these will repeat. These layers are pretty simple. I made two things that were in the time lapse the toned down hyperspace effect, and the stars that are slightly larger than the ones in the background. These layers, however, are not in the picture you see here, rather in a separate project file. Take note of the green lines. This is the 320 by 180 size of the layers that have the stars and hyperspace pieces. The space between those lines is the size of the view you will be able to see in the game. The red lines are the size of the background, which puts into perspective how much is not visible during a parallax. So as you can imagine, I would start the level off at this little space city. At that point, the player should not be able to see the planet on the very right, and potentially not the satellite. They will forever see the stars in hyperspace, which will always be in view of the camera and repeating as much as needed, thanks to tile mode. But now that I have explained this, it would be really nice to see this in Unity. All right. Here is the setup in Unity. I wanted to have the script done this weekend, but there are applications on the school computer I am using that still need installing, which I cannot do without permission. I'll have to make the script for the next video, but I can still show you the concept. In the scene view, you can see the camera aimed at my different layers from Asprite. The game view shows that you cannot see the full width of the background, which is exactly what I want. As for the stars and hyperspace effect, they are set to tile mode and are repeating themselves to allow for infinite scrolling. These deliver a sense of rapid movement, and my plan is for the background to scroll nice and slow, progressing to the end and ending up at a boss fight. I also made a player ship and have been messing with animations, but they're not fully ready yet and were not the first thing I wanted to import into Unity. There was one other video I looked into that talks about importing a sprite assets into Unity, which is the one you see here. It's good, and I will be potentially doing this next week. The video will be linked for those interested. Now, my plan was to begin WISE 201 Lesson 1, but I need to install some stuff on this computer, which again requires permission from faculty. Since that has to wait, I am going to briefly show you some of my docs and spreadsheets that organize my thoughts and objectives for the senior project. Alright, this is my senior project folder. I have a folder for slides, docs, and spreadsheets, all for this video game project. There isn't much for slides right now, I plan to use those for presentations, but we can start with docs. I have many docs related to this project, but only a couple are of relevance to what I want to talk about. Let's open up the coding doc, which breaks down features in my game that will require scripts. Rather than keep all these ideas in my head, I decided to type out a feature in the game that I wanted that I knew would require scripting. For each feature, you'll notice there are YouTube videos beneath each title. These are videos I found to help me achieve making these scripts. I imagine my scripts will not be the exact same as these tutorials, but they are here to guide me and offer ideas that I, as a novice coder, currently wouldn't think to do. Some sections are more barren, but what matters is that the idea is there, and when the time comes, I begin researching and trying to complete one of these scripts, one step at a time. 
The next thing I will show you is an objective spreadsheet. The way I sorted this out is by having a tab allocated to each software I am using for this project, minus Visual Studio. Any objectives related to that were filtered under a Unity tab. For this summer, my goal is to complete the Unity and A-Sprite objectives, hopefully having a majority of these checked out as complete before my final semester. The Y's objectives I am holding off on. My reasoning for this is that I do not want to play around with audio without a proper playground to draw inspiration from. What I mean is that the sounds I create will come to me easier if I have a runnable game and setting to be inspired by. Another reason is that Wise events are tied to events in the game engine, which if I do not have any in my game engine, then there's not many ways for me to really prepare. If I find the time or inspiration as I am completing steps, I will most likely make some sounds to complement animations, or perhaps a soundtrack for the first level upon completing the parallax. The last thing I want to show you is an audio asset spreadsheet for Wise. This is a spreadsheet I had talked about in recent videos that I had seen in demo reels of the Y sound engine. This was the format I settled on that makes the best sense to me, but since this is my first time doing this, the format is bound to change. I want to have my sound assets categorized in this file because it will be good for organization and having quick access to specificities that I may need to reference. So that outlines my direction a little better for this project. If you have any questions, thoughts, or suggestions, feel free to ask. There's a lot I want to cover, but also stuff I may forget to cover that you might catch on to. That will be it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.